Hi, I'm Todd, and thanks for joining me. Hope you're having a great week. Now, if you've ever worked with a vocalist or a voiceover actor that has either a very wide or narrow dynamic range, you know how difficult it can be to get that to sit in a mix or even sound right in a solo recording. And sometimes compression isn't enough. So today I've got the solution for you. Let's check it out. Now, compression has been and likely always will be a great means of controlling the transients in our vocalists and voiceover actors recordings. The issue becomes when we don't have really separated transients. So now if we've got really high bumps, we can take those down with a compressor without really damaging the integrity of the recording. But what happens if the general level is very uneven and we have some very quiet areas that we need to deal with? Compression isn't so great there. Sure, we can go ahead and boost the level up on the track. We can smash it back down with a compressor and we're gonna just even everything out Problem is, we lose the dynamics, we lose the performance, not to mention if your recording space is anything less than perfect, all of a sudden whatever's in the background starts to come forward in the mix. So we really don't want to do that if we can help it. Now in the past, the way we always dealt with it was simply to go ahead and ride the faders. So if we had an artist in the studio, we'd actually manually increase and decrease the gain on the faders during the performance. That allowed us to get a recording that was a little more even and a little bit easier to deal with after the fact. But in the end, that takes time, it takes practice. You may be recording yourself or you may not be using faders. So I've got a solution for you. So in the first example, I have a male vocal here and you can see that it's he's fairly consistent across this range, except we really taper off at the end of each phrase. And I mean, that's okay. We wanna taper off in the case of this song, but we just wanna make sure we don't lose it in the mix. So I'll let you hear the track by itself. You look so good in my sweater Winter is my favorite weather Cause it brings you close You can hear it's okay, but you lose a bit at the beginning and the end actually of each phrase. And I'll put it in the mix for you. You look so good in my sweater Winter is my favorite weather Cause it brings you close now to prevent losing those beginnings and ends of each phrase is I could write some manual automation in here. Just go ahead and do that with the mouse. Other option, of course, is to record that automation using the fader here in Studio One. I can use the mouse for that. I'm going to use the Persona's Fader Port 16. That's my control surface and allows me to move that fader up and down a little more easily. I'm not going to write the automation here, but I'll show you what the idea is like. You look so good in my sweater. Winter is my favorite weather Cause it brings you close And I need you close So that'll give you an idea. It's really an old-fashioned idea, but it's very effective to, to balance out those levels without uh, really creating an artificial sound. So you get the idea. The beginning and the end of each phrase are a little bit lost in the mix, and we can do a bit better with that. Now, normally I'd go ahead and I'd add some compression up. We don't have any very large transients here. I'll show you on screen. In this case, I've got the ART Pro VLA on this track. And uh, what that's going to do is just catch a few of the transients in a very smooth way. It's a Vactral optical compressor. And uh, as you'll see, I don't have anything too aggressive sounding. So let's have a listen to that. You look so good in my sweater. Winter is my favorite weather. And that's starting to get us in the right direction. What I've done here essentially is boosted the level of the entire track, but then I've trimmed it back a bit with the compressor. So I've reduced the range between the lows and the highs. Now, again, I could do this and I could manually ride the faders as I did first, but instead what I like to use is a plugin uh, from Waves. And I'm not going to get into the controversy of Waves that's been going on for some time. Uh, you know, like any other company, they have various models they want to uh, deliver their products in. But I will tell you that this Vocal Rider is a very convenient plugin, and it does save you a lot of time. Now, I've configured this for vocals. I've got it set to be uh, slow, so it's not overly aggressive. And I'm letting it boost as much as 6 dB and cut as much as 2 dB. And I've set the target here for it at minus, roughly minus 13, 12 and a half. And the idea is to keep this uh, without sounding artificial again. I want this all to be very natural. You look so good in my sweater. Winter is my favorite weather. Cause it brings you close. And I need you close. 
You see, it's just helping us hear the beginning and the end of the phrase in a very subtle way. I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll put the playback back on and I'll take turns turning the rider off and on for you to hear. You look so good in my sweater. Winter is my favorite weather because it brings you close. And I need you close. You look so good in my sweater. Winter is my favorite weather. So again, very subtle, and that's what we want. Now, of course, vocals in a mix aren't the only use for this. We can also use it for voiceover. And here I've included a sample voiceover recording. You can see it has some very high peaks as well as some very low areas. I'll let you listen. When recording voiceover audio, it's important to allow expression to come through without hurting your audience's ears if you get excited and also without them straining to hear your voice if you happen to taper off quietly. To so you get the idea. I mean, we want to, as voice actors, you definitely want to have dynamics and expression but of course there are ranges where it's going to be comfortable for the listener. So the first thing we normally do is add a compressor in. So I'm going to do that. I have the Warm Audio WA-2A. That's an optical LA-2A style compressor. Very popular for voiceover and for vocals. So let's go ahead and listen with that. When recording voiceover audio, it's important to allow expression to come through without hurting your audience's ears if you get excited and also without them straining to hear your voice if you happen to taper off quietly towards the end of a sentence. And so, of course, as you can hear, it did a good job of taming that really high outburst that I had, but really nothing, of course, for the low area. So I've loaded this up. Here I have the settings that allows us to get it to about 6 dB of gain, take away about 4.5 dB, and I've set the target for 16 for voiceover. When recording voiceover audio, it's important to allow expression to come through without hurting your audience's ears if you get excited and also without them straining to hear your voice if you happen to taper off quietly towards the end of a sentence. And so expression, and so I hope that translated well, but the idea there is that the vocal writer was actually helping the compressor to even smooth that, that higher burst area even more. But then when we got to the low section, you could see it was pretty much giving it that entire 6 dB of boost that I was able to, uh, to add or that I configured it for anyways. One more time, I'll let you hear it with and without. When recording voiceover audio, it's important to allow expression to come through without hurting your audience's ears if you get excited and also without them straining to hear your voice if you happen to taper off quietly towards the end of a sentence. And so expression and dynamics are important. How do we achieve both? When recording voiceover audio, it's important to allow expression to come through without hurting your audience's ears if you get excited and also without them straining to hear your voice if you happen to taper off quietly towards the end of a sentence. And so expression and dynamics are important. How do we achieve both? Now, of course, you can accomplish the same thing by manually drawing in the automation on your tracks for levels. It'll even give you more granularity of control. And if you have a control surface, that'll speed things up for you as well. But I found over the years that the Vocal Rider plugin has actually saved me a lot of time and therefore money. Don't ever purchase it when it's on full price, $250, $290. It always goes on sale for $25, $29, sometimes a two for one deal. And of course, notwithstanding all the drama lately around Waze with subscription versus lifetime purchases and the back and forth on that, I, I don't wanna get into it too much, but I actually believe most companies are capable of the same thing. So I don't wanna pick on Waves too much any more than any of the others. If it's a useful tool for me, I'll get it, I'll get some value out of it, and I kind of chalk it up to that. And if you're looking for other ways to level up your quality while saving yourself some time, check out one of the other videos on the screen. As always, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.